Hello and welcome to this video, Friday the 2nd of September. Now if you're getting a feeling of deja vu, I'm just having another go at this video. I wasn't very happy with the way I communicated on the last one. Now this is to do with official government guidelines, which of course we have to follow. I have to follow as a YouTube broadcaster. Make sure I'm consistent with government guidelines and WHO guidelines. So let's look at a couple of those guidelines just to start us off here. This one's from the Green Book, which is the Vaccination Against Disease uh, definitive text in the United Kingdom. And that says the JVCI, Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunity, advises that breastfeeding women should be offered any suitable COVID vaccine. Now, you may take that offer up, you may not take that offer up, but at least it's fairly clear. Breastfeeding women should be offered any suitable COVID-19 vaccine. And that's from here. This is the Green Book Vaccination Against Disease. But when we go on to this report here from the Medicines and Healthcare Regulatory, uh, Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Authority, we get slightly different advice. In fact, rather paradoxical advice. So the Green Book was updated on the 17th of August 2022, as you see here. And this is the summary report from the uh, public assessment related to the Pfizer vaccine. Uh, and from that, from that site I've just shown you, women who are breastfeeding should not be vaccinated, should also not be vaccinated. So the Green Book is clearly saying that uh, they should be vaccinated. This government report here is saying breastfeeding women should um, not be vaccinated. And here's the actual part of the report that actually uh, says that there. So a um, bit of a bit of a contradiction really so if we look at the uh, the summary of this report here here we have the report uh, authorization for uh, temporary supply so th this is for temporary supply for the Pfizer vaccine Department of Health and Social Care updated as we said the 16th of August so um, the recommendation not to vaccinate is from the 16th of August the recommend to vaccinate is from the 17th of August in the case of breast feeding. Uh, now this goes from this report, reproductive and developmental toxicity, uh, fertility and early embryonic development and embryo fetal development is the heading. Uh, a combined fertility and development study including teratogenicity and postnatal investigation in rats is ongoing. So teratogenicity is anything that causes abnormal fetal development. Uh, so, for example, um, alcohol would be teratogenic, uh, radiation would be teratogenic, sodium valparate, uh, thalidomide, these things would be teratogenic. So that's what they're testing for. But the study in rats is ongoing, which indicates we haven't really got the results yet. Uh, prenatal and postnatal development, uh, including maternal function, um, no studies have been done. Um, studies in which the offspring juvenile animals are dosed and or further evaluated, no such studies have been done. Um, local tolerance, no such studies have been done. Assessments are made a part of general toxicity study. Uh, should suffice, so they're saying that the, the general toxicity studies should suffice, they don't need particular ones related to pregnancy and breastfeeding. But other toxicity studies in this situation, no studies have been done. Um, so you might say there's a bit of a, a dearth of information there. Now the toxicity conclusions from, again this is from this, this is all from this paper here, this government report from the um, Healthcare and uh, Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency. Uh, the absence of reproductive toxicity data is a reflection of the speed of development to first identify and select mRNA vaccines. So basically they seem to be saying there wasn't time to do that. And it's rapid development to meet ongoing urgent healthcare needs. Now, uh, we did have ongoing uh, urgent healthcare needs. I'll leave you to decide whether we still have. Uh, but they're saying, in principle, a decision on licensing a vaccine could be taken in these circumstances without data from reproductive toxicity studies in animals, which, given the 
studies that haven't been done here, uh, that would indeed appear, that would appear to be the case. Um, but there are studies ongoing and um, these will be provided when available. So good to know they'll be provided when available. But of course we have been vaccinating for some time now. Now this report here goes on to talk about uh, this uh, which is um, in the context and supply under regulation 174. Now 174 is the uh, emergency uh, regulation basically the uh, the emergency use authorization in this case for the Pfizer BioNTech uh, vaccine and uh, this says this um, it is uh, considered that sufficient reassurance of safe use of the vaccine in pregnant women cannot be provided at the present time. So having recommended against, as we saw in the introduction, breastfeeding, it's now saying there's not... Well, let's just see exactly what it says, because these are direct cut and paste. It is considered that sufficient reassurance of safe use of the vaccine in pregnant women cannot be provided at the present time. OK, so that seems to me to be saying that, that we shouldn't be vaccinating breast... Uh, we shouldn't be va uh, vaccinating pregnant women. This is pregnancy. It is considered that sufficient reassurance of safe use of the vaccine in pregnant women cannot be provided at the present time. Fair enough. However, use in women of childbearing potential could be supported. So this is child women of childbearing age. Providing healthcare professionals are advised to rule out or... Uh, to rule out known or suspected pregnancy prior to vaccination. So this seems to be saying that healthcare professionals should rule out pregnancy uh, prior to vaccination. And, th and then, as we said at the start, women who are breastfeeding should also not be vaccinated. So let's clarify what it says in the Green Book now in a little more detail. So the Green Book is the definitive vaccination against disease. So I I've, I've been... Um, vaccinating and teaching people to vaccinate for a long long time and the green book the vaccination against disease is the definitive text we go by what it says in that book that is our bible on this matter as we say updated on the 17th of august uh, 2022 pregnancy there is no known risk associated with giving inactivated recombinant viral or bacterial uh, vaccines or toxins during pregnancy while breastfeeding. So there's no known associated risk with giving these recombinant viral or bacterial vaccines during pregnancy or while breastfeeding. So it's fine to give during pregnancy and breastfeeding. And the reference there is, um, this is the evidence that the Green Book are giving, uh, Kroger et al, 2013. Um, so my response to that would be really 2013. The current vaccines weren't invented till 2019, 2020. So that could be considered to be a little bit out of date. Developmental and reproductive testing of the Pfizer-BioNTech and uh, Moderna and AstraZeneca vaccines in animals have not raised any concerns. Well, I'm pleased it hasn't raised any concerns, but we have just looked um, at the uh, dearth of studies quite a few studies had not been done so in that case it's not too surprising that it didn't come up with anything really uh, jvci is therefore uh, uh, advised that women who are pregnant should be recommended to receive primary immunization so recognizing advising vaccination in pregnancy there and that pregnancy is considered, uh, and the pregnancy is considered a clinical risk group for the autumn booster program. That seems to be indicating that the Green Book is advising um, almost a priority vaccination. They should consider a, a clinical risk group uh, to be grouped in by the sounds of it there with people with heart disease, chronic lung disease, diabetes, hypertension. Anyway, they go on. This is still the Green Book, remember, uh, the Green Book here. Um, routine questioning about last menstrual period uh, or pre and or pregnancy testing is not required before offering the vaccine. So basically you don't need to try and work out if someone's pregnant before offering the vaccine. According to the uh, Green Book, 
but the other the other data we looked at does say that we should be testing for uh, should be inquiring about pregnancy so again there does seem to be a contradiction there Surveillance of the uh, inadvertent administration of COVID vaccine in early pregnancy is being conducted by the UK and the UK Health Security Agency. So they're trying to get information on if the vaccine is given inadvertently. So it seems to be saying that you don't need to ask about pregnancy, it doesn't matter, but then if it's given during early pregnancy, you should report that. So again, that doesn't really quite make sense. That should be reported to the Health Security Agency Immunisation and Vaccine uh, Preventable Disease Division to whom such cases should be reported. Um, this surveillance is being undertaken to document safety in women who unknowingly receive a vaccine. And then back to the topic of breastfeeding from the Green Book. Uh, there is no known risk associated There is no known risk associated with being given a non-living vaccine while breastfeeding. JVCI advises that breastfeeding women should be offered any suitable COVID-19 vaccine. So I think we are seeing a bit of tension there between different government guidelines. Breastfeeding, JVCI advises that breastfeeding women should be offered an available vaccine. And here we have the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Authority. Women who are breastfeeding should not be vaccinated. Green Book saying that um, women in pregnancy can be vaccinated, but if, if they're vaccinated inadvertently, this should be reported. And the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Authority, as I interpreted it, saying that women should, uh, pregnant women should not be vaccinated. Now, here's the precise wording here. You can decide if that's what it means. It is considered that sufficient reassurance of safe use of the vaccine in pregnant women cannot be provided at the present time. But it can be given if pregnancy is excluded. And as we say, these recommendations came out on consecutive days. So a little bit confusing uh, as we strive to obey uh, local and uh, international uh, guidelines. Thank you for watching.